Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to be going over the symbology of these so-called medical symbols that a lot of people are familiar with. So I'm going to start with the caduceus. So most people are familiar with this symbol. In Australia, um, the caduceus is on every ambulance, so this is an Australian ambulance in the photo. And the thing is, is that even though the caduceus actually represents quite a lot it has nothing to do with medicine so the caduceus is actually the staff of hermes so hermes trismegistus and hermes is also known as mercury so this is the greek god hermes but what does mercury represent and by the way i'm talking mercury as in the archetype mercury so um, let me just go to the next slide, see if, yeah, there we go. So this is a statue of the Greek god Hermes, and that is the glyph for Mercury. So now you see what I'm talking about um, in a symbolism sense. So Mercury and also the Greek god Hermes represents many things like commerce, negotiation, trade, exchange, trickery, um, thieves, borders, travel, and crossroads. But as you can tell, it has nothing to do with medicine. And if you can see on the statue here, the wings on the helmet and the wings at the heels of Hermes' feet, this is what really represents Mercury because Mercury is the fastest moving planet. So in the statue, it's representing speed and travel which are related to mercury what actually is the correct symbol for medicine and healing is the rod of asclepius so asclepius is the greek god of medicine healing wisdom rejuvenation and physicians and asclepius is the son of apollo and apollo is the god of healing truth and prophecy Quite interestingly, I actually found that over 38% of American medical associations and over 63% of American hospitals use the caduceus as their symbol. So a lot of people consider the use of the caduceus in place of the rod of Asclepius um, was just due to confusion because they look so similar. Um, and that's such a likely excuse because... <laughs> Uh, it definitely is no accident that the caduceus was used instead. When we think of um, anything to do with Western medicine, um, the massive pharmaceutical companies, we know by now that it is the biggest money-making scam. They make so much money off keeping people sick. They, there is no intention for healing and it is all about the profit that they can make off the people that go to see doctors, go to hospitals. So it fits quite well that they have used the staff of Caduceus um, and everything that that represents, considering that it represents, you know, trade, profit, commerce as well. Did I say commerce? Well, commerce is, you know, that's exactly right. So I'll just talk a little bit more about um, the Greek god Asclepius, who is the one that you can see in the image. So Asclepius in mythology was um, an incredible healer, um, supposedly was that good of a healer that he could bring people back to life from the dead. Um, and as the myth goes, Zeus, which is the god of the sky, found out about this and did not like that. So he killed Asclepius and basically banished him to the stars as the constellation Ophiuchus. So this is the Ophiuchus constellation, which also is known as the serpent bearer. So this is supposed to be Asclepius in the constellations. But what's interesting is that not all hospitals and medical associations use the caduceus some actually use the correct symbol for medicine and healing which is the rod of asclepius 
and particularly I wanted to show that the World Health Organization uses the rod of Asclepius. So does the American Medical Association. So why is that? Because we know that, well, they're, they're one and the same as all the hospitals. All the hospitals work under the rule of these associations. So why did they use the correct symbology instead of using the caduceus? Well, I'm going to break down the emblem of the World Health Organization. So I've split it all up. I've pulled out all the images and I will go through them. So we have the Rod of Asclepius, which I've already talked about. Symbolic of medicine, healing or else. Then what we actually have behind the Rod of Asclepius is the Flat Earth map. As you can see, it's completely identical. There's no question about it. The World Health Organization displays the Flat Earth map. Then I also went ahead and counted all the sections of which there are 33 sections and the number 33 uh, gets a pretty bad rep actually, but it's not an evil number. 33 always correlates to the number of vertebrae in your spine. So it's the same as how Jesus lived till the age 33 and there are 33 degrees in Freemasonry. It's all talking about the 33 vertebrae of your spine and your spinal column always represents ascension. It's about ascending from the root to the heavens, which is your brain. Um, when texts talk about stairways, that can also represent your spine. And then we've got the laurel wreath that is surrounding all the rest of it. And the laurel wreath actually represents triumph and success. So when I pulled it all apart, it puts a lot of things into perspective. First of all, what it's trying to show here is actually truth. You know, they've actually put a lot of truth into this symbolism. When it comes to the flat earth map, that just goes to world. It's just kind of displaying earth, right? Even though world is actually an age, um, according to etymology, world means age of man. So it's a when not aware, but in this context, I'm just gonna say world. Then with the Rod of Asclepius and how they use that, um, it is actually shown in a lot of places um, symbolically. And remember, our subconscious mind reads and sees every single logo and symbol and it in and overstands it. So, for example, the dollar sign, this is actually the fiat dollar sign and it looks very similar to a snake coiled around a rod. Then also in any imagery of the scene from Genesis of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, there is also the serpent coiled around the tree, which looks very similar to a rod. And what I found very interesting is how there is the snake coiled around the rod over the top of the 33 sections in their logo, which I correlate to the human spine. And then, not to mention, it is within the laurel wreath, which symbolizes triumph and success. So, and, and glory, things like that, praise. So this all actually really ties together in a good way, which I'm going to explain a little bit more about it when I get to it. But the snake always represents wisdom. It represents things like rebirth, transformation as well because the snake sheds its skin and then it becomes anew. But it also is a key symbolic representation of wisdom. Um, in scriptures, it says, ye be wise as serpents. Interestingly, how they chose all these symbols to create the emblem for a health logo, because this is 
showing the process of ascension within your own body and the body is fully illuminated when your eye is single because it says in the bible when thine eye is single thy body shall be full of light so it's talking about the third eye being the torch of the temple and illuminating the body so as the snake which i will get to later represents your consciousness rising up your spine to the heights of the pineal gland it is really showing the success of your body being illuminated but the world health organization is bad okay they're putting truth here because this is one big game and it all depends on how well you can decode the game and so they're going to put truth out there um but most people won't see this they most people would look com- completely past this they don't even recognize what this says but just to show to you that they are in, this is still a very evil organization literally as evil as it can get um I went ahead onto the trusty Gematria website, having no idea if this would actually come out as I was predicting it could. But I just typed it in and there you go. It is the exact same as 666. So they left their mark. They put out a lot of truth within the emblem, but they made sure that we knew who was doing it. So 666, there we go. Um, And... Also, it is the same as activate God and goddess DNA to full completion, which I found quite interesting as well, because um, anything to do with raising consciousness up your spine to heaven from hell at the root to heaven in the brain, that has a lot to do with activation. Um, And then the laurel wreath is triumph and success, which is like completion. Um, completing the activation from the lowest level of consciousness and raising consciousness. So that's quite interesting as well. But the main part was, yes, the WHO is still evil, (laughs) despite that they've put some truth out, which we're all used to now. They put truth everywhere. But we're going to go back a little bit to the stuff of Caduceus, because although Yes, it has nothing to do with medicine, even though corporations are displaying that symbol incorrectly. And despite it having to do with commerce, it also has a lot of truth within the symbol. Which I'm going to go through and explain. So this is pretty much disregarding everything to do with commerce and just looking at what it is the rod or the wand with two snakes twirling around it and the wings at the top. So what the caduceus also represents is the nadis in your body. And please don't mind that the image on the left is quite new agey with the whole, I don't know, the sitting position and the finger positions, but it was the only image I could find. And one that closely represents what I'm going to be trying to explain. So as you can see here, there are the seven chakras. um, And the seven chakras, well, chakras just means a spinning wheel. They're just energy points that connect us to our ethereal bodies, which are our true bodies. um, But they connect us to the carnal body. And... They are very key for displaying the levels of consciousness with the root chakra being the lowest level of consciousness. Um, The lower the level of consciousness, the more materialistic someone would be. Um, They, they, you know, they're the the type of person when you can tell that they're residing in the carnal body because they're driven by the body instead of driven by spirit um, and a seeker of wisdom and knowledge. Yep, and so how the caduceus relates to the nadis, and this actually relates to the kundalini rising. The thing is, is that the process 
is actually physically related to our body. So the problem here is not Kundalini. The problem is what the New Age cage has brought in to really corrupt this ancient knowledge. So it has always been known and it's talked about in the Bible. They just don't use the word Kundalini and they don't use the Nadis. The Egyptians talk about it and most ancient texts talk about it because all it really is is raising consciousness and awareness and it's just a process that happens within and in your body. So you don't have to call it Kundalini because some people um, from brainwashing are taught to fear it, taught that it is evil. Um, There's just a lot of misconceptions that has happened that is really tricking a lot of people. So I'm fully aware of the New Age movement and what it does to really corrupt ancient divine knowledge. So just know that is my um, opinions. So I'm not going to be talking about go and meditate and sit in this funny position and then all of a sudden you're going to be enlightened. That is what they'll try to teach you in the New Age movement, which is completely <laughs> false. So... Um, So that's why I was saying just kind of ignore the way he's sitting and what this image is trying to represent. But it was the best image I could find to represent what I'm trying to talk about. So on the caduceus, there is the rod. The rod symbolizes shushamna, which is your spinal column. Then there are the two snakes that intertwine upwards and going up the rod. The eye is the left snake and it's the left nerve channel. It is the feminine water and lunar energy channel. Then, because this is dual, it's representing duality here and balance. Then the right snake is called Pingala. This is the right nerve channel. It's masculine and it represents solar and fire. So this is that fire and ice. It happens in your body. And correlating to the physical aspects of your body, just like the sushamna relates to the physical spinal column in your body. These nerve channels are actually part of the autonomic nervous system. So Ida is the parasympathetic branch and Pingala is the sympathetic branch. So these are the processes that happen in your body. Um, And according to mythology, the Kundalini is about a serpent that's called three times at the bottom of your spine and it raises as you raise your consciousness and as you can see the snakes here are reaching the pineal gland at the third eye and then you've got the wings at the top i liked this photo for the fact that the crown chakra is above the body because that's the case the crown chakra is not in your body it's actually above your body and contrary to popular belief you can't actually reach the crown chakra till basically you die because the carnal body is too dense to be actually residing at the crown chakra. This on the right image is the overlay of the Kabbalah tree of life over a human body just to represent it. So similarly, the crown on the left is Keta, which is the crown on the Kabbalah tree of life. And the, that is really the highest point. And so here they've put it on the body. It should really be out of the body. But um, the idea is that, yes, Keta is the crown. It's the highest point. And so I'm going to be talking now about the wings and what the wings represent on the Caduceus staff. So this is to symbolize the relation to the cherubim in the biblical text with the cerebrum of the brain and the brain is the highest point in your body hence why it represents heaven so the wings are really the cherubim so your spine is the pole matter which is your physical body and the snake is representing your consciousness rising hence why it's wisdom and in scripture it says and as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
when you lift up the serpent, the higher it goes, the closer you are to heaven and God resides in heaven. And the eternal life here is representing the crown or keta. I also wanted to show this. Um, my screen recording has cut out the bottom part, which is basically referencing the quote from Numbers in the Bible. But I'm just showing here that Moses also had a staff with a snake coiled around it, same as Asclepius and Hermes and also Thoth. This is the similarity that we find between myths from all around the world and how they actually, in some way or another, represent similar things. And just to show you that, yes, there are similar myths from all around the world, the staff of Caduceus is from the Greek god, Hermes. Then the Eastern religions talk about a similar thing with the Nadis. And the Egyptians also have the Uraeus or the staff of Osiris. And as you can see here, it is very, very similar to the Caduceus. There are two snakes that are coiled around a rod. And then we also have these wings and a pine cone. So the pine cone is your third eye. Here I've got the pineal gland, which is known as the third eye. No, it doesn't look exactly like a pine cone, as you can see, but it is shaped like a pine cone, and that's where the similarity is. So that is why pine cones always symbolize the pineal gland and the third eye. So here you can see the snakes reach the third eye just as in the staff of Osiris. And once again, the wings are actually representing the cerebrum in your body with the pineal gland being right in between them. Which is why here the pine cone is exactly in between the wings, which are the cherubim. So now you can see that the medical industries are using the caduceus in the wrong sense. They're misrepresenting what it symbolizes and what it means. Yes, it is the staff of the Greek god Hermes, so it still represents commerce, but the idea is that it has absolutely nothing to do with medicine. And then when you look at the symbology of the snakes rising up the pole to the heights of heaven, then now you can relate it to the process of ascension in your own body. Then we also have talked about the Asclepius rod, how this is actually the correct symbol of medicine any medical association, if they're going to be using a symbol to do with medicine, it should be this one, as it is actually related to healing and medicine. So, I hope that all makes sense, and thank you for listening.